For those of you who remember the early days of Cyberpunk 2077, there was talk about wall running and parkour type skills, but due to programming and technical issues, that skill set was cut from the game. However, we can still utilize some climbing abilities with cybernetics and the use of air vents, fire escapes and ledges in the game, and if we get good at climbing in the game, we can reach some pretty high places and some hidden areas. And in this video, that's exactly what I'm going to show you. My name's Mike, you're watching Deconstructing the Game, let's get to it. First things first, you're going to want to install some cybernetics and these can be quite pricey. The reinforced tendons and the fortified ankles come in at a cool 45,000 eddies, but the best option is the reinforced tendons because they allow you to maneuver in mid-air and change direction. The maneuvering system also allows you to gain further reach if you're jumping building to building and allows you to dodge in mid-air. A couple other things you can add to yourself to bolster your climbing ability is armor or clothing that reduces fall damage but I think there might be a glitch because on mine it's showing me as having zero just now. One of my favourite areas of Night City is Charter Hill because it's not only easy to manoeuvre around the buildings but there's a few hidden areas and quite interesting places to find here as well. The first thing you're going to want to do if you're a beginner to climbing or scaling buildings in Cyberpunk is learn how to climb balconies because these, apart from ledges, are one of the easier options to choose if you're wanting to climb up high buildings or get to a vantage point. Climbing balconies is relatively easy but can get quite tricky. All you have to do is stand on the barrier and then jump up, but if there's a texture that is trying to push you away or stop you from getting up, all you have to do is jump backwards, press jump again forwards, and if you're just shy of the mark you can use the dodge feature to blast forward and reach your mark, and then eventually you'll get to the top. Once you're at the top, you can try your luck at jumping to the next building, and don't worry if you land hard, as long as you reach your destination without dying, it's mission accomplished. There are a load of buildings you can jump across to and then scale again, practicing your climbing skills and jumping skills. For many of you who are trying this first time, you will miss your target, but sometimes you'll get lucky like I did here and you'll land on a lower ledge. If that happens, just accept it and then climb up to where you want to be. You can repeat these steps or practice your ledge running skills by climbing on the ledges. These are a little bit trickier as they are smaller and more condensed in the balconies and may cause more of a challenge, but you can do it. It's really easy once you get the hang of it. A large part of climbing in Cyberpunk is trial and error and you never really know what surface is going to be scalable until you try. Most ledges and balconies as I've already mentioned are a no brainer and you can scale them with ease if you get the hang of it but there are other textures like here I'm going through the air vent system that I didn't really know was possible until I tried it. Obviously you want to avoid as much inconvenience as possible and just go with the path of least resistance. So here instead of going at the middle of the building I decided to go on the edge where there's no vent system or anything blocking my path and I could simply jump straight to the top. You'll be pretty surprised at how far you can get with the double jump and dodge system, but you don't actually have to use them in the same order. You can jump, dodge and then jump again, which might give you an extra boost depending on where you want to be. And then when you perfect your jumping skills, you can do stuff like this and get onto even harder, hard to reach places. And before you know it, you'll be playing Mirror's Edge by stringing together cool moves, double jumping, power sliding, and scaling balconies. You don't have to be fast about your moves, but if you're making a cool video, practice always makes perfect. But if you're just doing it to explore and find some new places, take your time, think about where you want to go, and before you know it, you'll be on top in no time. If there's a particular location you want to reach but can't see around a corner, all you have to do is activate the in-game camera, which will allow you to gain a better angle and vantage point, which will allow you 
to plan your next move. It's always worth sneaking in the quick disclaimer and as I say all the time in my videos, always save your game before trying any climbing or glitch skills because there's always a chance you will get stuck and if you haven't saved it beforehand, you're gonna regret it. If you reach any protruding areas on a ledge, all you have to do is look at your feet to make sure you're standing on the ledge itself and you're not getting pushed off. And then once that's done, just carry on as is. This brings us nicely onto sloped surfaces and believe it or not, all sloped surfaces and buildings in Cyberpunk are climbable, regardless if they have ledges on or not, and all you have to do is spam the jump button and slide up at an angle. Eventually, you will reach the top. If it tries to push you off, all you have to do is use the dodge system and push yourself forward and continue sliding up. It does take time to get used to and it can be a little bit tricky, but once you get the hang of it, it will open up a whole new different area for you to explore. Some ledges can even be used to propel you to other areas and this one works pretty well but it's very unpredictable and can push you off in either direction, so wield the power with care. Air vent systems and fire escapes are also great ways to access buildings that are normally reserved for missions only and you can go back there and pick up some collectibles or missing information that you missed the first time round. Climbing is important, but what's equally as important is finding your way down without dying, especially if you find an area you can't access conventionally and find yourself a new weapon. Different surfaces can be trickier than others to navigate, like balconies if they're enclosed can be harder, but grabbing onto them is possible. Other surfaces, you simply need to look where you're going and drop onto them. So let's look at a practical application for those skills that I've just shown you. This building in front of us here is actually accessible from the ground level and is part of a gig and a mission in the game. However, I didn't know this at the time and simply wanted to climb the front of it to see if it was possible. Just a quick reminder for anyone who hasn't seen the content on my channel before is everything recorded here is by an Xbox One X version. There are no mods or chips on here and everything is done through the vanilla version of Cyberpunk. When you're doing something like this, it's always good to identify potential access points and just scope out the area in general to see what your potential paths are and how you can access the building. For example, looking there, I saw the support beams and thought that might be a vulnerability I could exploit in the future. You can see here in my matrix style photograph that I was actually trying to see around the corner to plan my next move. I thought I could probably get onto that slope from where I was using the run and jump and dodge but I gave it a try a couple of times and ended up dying so I was forced to reload the game at a lower point and try a different uh, approach. As I say, it does happen and trial and error is the way to go and if you try enough times and look at the potential vulnerabilities of these buildings, you will get to the top.
Once again, using the photo mode to see how I can access the building, the top ledge there is far too high and I can't gain any reach and grab onto that and there's nothing around the corner. So I decide to go to the other side, use photo mode and take a look at those support beams that we saw earlier from the bottom. They are close enough if we use the double jump and the dodge and we can actually jump onto them, which allows us to progress even further. I actually got distracted while recording for this video and this was a building that I basically decided to climb out of sheer fun and uh, I kind of went off on a tangent. But I decided to add this to the video because I implement all of the things I talk about in the video and it's a good practical application for those skills to show you just what buildings you can climb. This is pretty much uh, balconies on a slope, but as we get closer to the top, there is a slope surface that tries to push us off. But by using the dodge facility there, you can see me just being pushed off, dodge forward, and then we actually can get to the top. And there we go, we're at a nice part of the building. We're at the very top um, restaurant here. This is uh, an area that's reserved pretty much for a carry Eurodyne mission and you can access it uh, later on in the game and after that mission which I didn't actually know about until I tried to use elevator. Um, so that's a pretty cool feature. Being accurate while climbing in Night City is of vital importance but there's no point in being accurate in your climbing ability if the surface you're landing on doesn't actually exist. The higher you go in Night City the worse the graphics become because the developers don't expect you to reach here. So the way you can test the integrity is by shooting it. You're essentially looking for a spark or a kick up of dirt to prove that the surface is solid and then once you have that confirmation you can run around to your heart's content. In a lot of my videos on Twitch, you'll basically see me running around shooting at the ground like a crazy person, but this is to test whether or not I'm going to fall through it and die. Like this balcony here, the bullets seem to go through, so another test you can do is throw a grenade, and if the grenade falls right through and lands somewhere else, you know that area is no-go and just avoid it because you're going to die. Showing you this concept in daylight then, obviously the surfaces that appear to be solid have bullet holes after being shot and you can walk on them, but all the poorly rendered and blurry textures are pretty much not there and you can walk straight through them. And if you were to walk on this without looking into the void, you would probably die. As you can see, textures, graphics, and visuals just become an absolute mess over here. And it's pretty much because you're not meant to be here. And standing on that glass um, panel is pretty trippy actually. And I think I got a bit of vertical uh, making this video because uh, there's nothing under your feet when you stand on that. And it's just, it's just very trippy. So hopefully you've learned something today by watching this video and if you get good at climbing in Cyberpunk you can find some pretty interesting and weird places around Night City that the developers have either forgotten about or have cut from the game. You can get some pretty high places allowing you to get a good vantage point on other cut content or possible future DLC and you can take some pretty cool pictures of your character in unique environments. Whether that's on the ground or in the air that is entirely up to you. If you like the content in this video, you can always check out the YouTube channel for more cyberpunk tips, tricks and interesting DLC theories, or you can catch me on Twitch as sometimes I'll do these glitches live. That's all from me and the gang, I'll catch you later.